Hi guys, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome to Angle Guys. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. So I guess yesterday was the spring equinox, which I did not know <laughs> because I've been kind of out of it. I've had a little bit of a rough period. On last Sunday, I was in a car accident, as some of you know. So I've been kind of sidetracked with car insurance companies and worry about my vehicle and being grounded at home and not having the freedom to do what I need to do and all of that sort of stuff. But that will all greatly change, hopefully very swiftly. Um, it's nice to be moving into the energy of spring. We are now moving also into airy season, which will be exciting too. Very dynamic, fiery, um, ready to make you know decisions, move forward, take actions, that sort of thing. So the monthly taroscopes will be coming out starting with the fire signs. Aries will go out first because so it will be Aries birthday season. This is your weekly forecast for the month of March for the 21st through the 27th of this uh, month of March. Now, if you're seeing this on a date that's not March, right? It's okay. It might still have meaning for you, this reading. Each of these cards originally is intended for, intended for one or two days, maybe three days out of the week. Some of you may experience one of these cards throughout the entirety of the week. Some of you might experience all of these cards and then some. So there's a lot of flexibility with these readings. Please pull down the uh, pull down menu in the video description on the YouTube channel and read the video description. There it tells you how you can support the channel, what I want you to keep in mind when utilizing my readings, um, as far as you know how you should be thinking and how you should be viewing these readings and how to best utilize them in your life, if at all. Um, please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy them and hit subscribe. And let's get into this and see what we've got going on for March. 21st through the 27th. Wow, March is going to be over after this week. It's so crazy. <clears throat> All right, so for the early part of the week, our first card out is going to be the Eight of Cups. I'll take her. We've seen her before. She's a bit emotional. We had a lot of that emotional energy in yesterday's reading at the end of the week. We've been seeing a lot of Pentacles energy all throughout last week, right? The Eight of Cups is about walking away. Emotionally kind of being okay to walk away. Uh, sometimes finding that balance, right? That sort of, you know, there might not be any fight left in you. You may not want to hurt that person anymore. It's time to kind of go on our own journey. It's time to sort of release ourselves from anything that may not be working. With this particular Eight of Cups, it's not quite as sad as a traditional Eight of Cups card that I've seen in like say a Rider Waite deck. There's still a little bit of hope here for her. I love that we have these swans here, which are uh, indicate grace, This cu these coupled swans. So sometimes when we have to let go of things gracefully, although it may be sad, we might be forlorn, we might be a little bit, you know, I wouldn't say depressed, but like, it's more like a longing, like we wish things could be different, but they can't. And so we see the grace of the swans and the transformation of the butterflies and the spirit of the dragonflies that are around her and those beautiful red birds leading her along her journey away from whatever it is that she's been at. If we've been in fear, like I certainly have been in a lot of anxiety this last week after the car wreck. If we've been in anxiety, fear, and I'm just using that as an example because that's what I've been dealing with, now is the time to kind of emotionally come to terms with that, come into balance with that, and sort of step away from those things. Don't let those be our leaders. It's certainly not our leaders emotionally, right? Uh, we're also There's also this tiny little moon, which I've not noticed before, but there's this tiny little moon breaking through the plants in the sky. So there's a slight bit of intuition also being... Uh, led to us. There's a, there's a maybe a voice on high with, from within us that is guiding us down this path. We might be making choices for our own self-care, for our own betterment. Uh, and in doing so, we may have to make, I don't know if sacrifice is the, right, is the right word, but we may have to make changes in our life that emotionally might feel a little bit um, uh, like a goodbye in a way. Goodbyes may be uh, being said by some of us. Uh, during this time in the early part of this week. Changes may be taking place. Ultimately, I think that these changes are always for our own betterment, and it's us having done the work, having explored the feelings, uh, really checked in with them, understood them, and now have a clear enough understanding to know what's next to be done and how to go about doing it, how to go about taking the steps or doing the work emotionally to move 
um, our way towards something, you know, that feels better or is better for us. I hope that makes sense. Now, in the midweek, we have, oh, we have not seen this card yet. This is the Hierophant. I love this card. What a great version of the Hierophant. So Hierophant is, I believe, Taurian energy? Yes, Taurus en energy. He is the great teacher, right? And I love that this is depicted by an owl in a tree and he's teaching a young girl from a book. The Hierophant can sometimes be about social structures, social standings, how we're perceived in the world, um, whether or not we people are listening to us. It can indicate sometimes being put on display or being put into a place of authority or power where we need to sort of do the right thing um, or or express the right thing, teach the right thing, teach others the right way. We might find ourselves doing that. We might through through advice giving or support to others, we may be able to sort of teach them a different way to perceive things, to look at things, to move through things. The Hierophant is very much about higher learning, um, institutions, societal structure, all of those sort of things. So it's like kind of doing the right things for the right reasons that are very uh, sort of you know, I want to say loud and proud reason, if that makes sense. Now, what I do find interesting here is if you see this little sliver of this moon that was in that Eight of Cups, it's definitely gotten brighter or wider or brighter, uh, like more available and closer to us in the Hierophant. It feels like it's creeping up on us. Do you guys see that pattern in the card there? And this is just something that I, the way that I read, right? I'll sometimes see similarities that like are definitely, they pull my attention and it's like, look, Look here, here you're, here you're barely listening, or you're, you're maybe not able to exactly hear it, but it's sort of leading you and guiding you away from some of the sadness or disappointments that are no longer working for you. And now it's putting you into a position of power where you can sort of educate yourself or others around you to start to take correct and right steps uh, onto next things, next uh, grounded steps too. I will say that because of that energy of Taurus being in this card. Uh, Hierophant is also Major Arcana, so I'd expect that Major Arcana has bigger messages or meaning to them. That's just how they are, right? So the midweek should be impactful, it should be important, whatever we're learning, studying, teaching, uh, conveying, should be clear, concise, intelligent, uh, structured, um, uh, and if we're the ones teaching it, great. If we're the ones learning it, be studious, pay attention, right? There could be things that are coming at us from the outside world or the outside environment in very large and in charge kind of ways that is teaching us or educating us on how to be, be best in our life right now at this time. So if we're, there's this option here, I feel like in this card where we get to either be the little girl or the owl in the midweek. And some of us might feel as though we're the owl. And so we're in the role of teaching that knowledge, being kind and courteous and, and, and moving through in that sort of um, uh, socially acceptable way, right? Or we could be this little girl where we're paying attention to the cues of what's going on around us and we're learning them and acting on them as we move forward. Again, though, we still have, regardless of which role we play, we still have this stronger connection to this moon quality, which to me is this idea of listening to our intuition our own deeper subconscious knowledge and allowing it to also guide us through these situations i love all of the spring growth on this tree that they're sitting on it speaks to growth both within ourselves within our situations within our environments that should help us and also strengthen us that taurian energy that comes with the hero font will be grounded strong loving also like the roots of this tree that they're seated on. Does that make sense? Now, at the end of the week, okay, we've seen her a couple times. The devil. Devil is Capricorn energy and also major arcana. So this is a big ending for the week. Excuse me. Now, we see this spider, we see these webs. Spiders and webs aren't necessarily bad things, but sometimes we can get trapped in them. And the devil card is definitely about being trapped, right? Especially when I look at this woman and she's sort of like this half woman, half mushroom. Her legs are grounded into the ground, like she can't move or she can't escape necessarily. She feels part poisonous mushroom, part spider. It's all intermingled within her. Um, 
There is some sort of gift. She holds those cherries there. There is some sort of fruit. There's some sort of temptation there. Something we might need to learn or something that some sort of hurdle we might need to get past. This for you guys can be any sort of Achilles heel that you have going on. What I feel like with the Hierophant in the midweek leading into the devil in the latter part of the week, the Hierophant is like that earthy Taurian energy. The devil is that earthy Capricorn energy, right? So they're along the same lines of one another, but one is about sort of holding oneself up through one's knowledge. The other is about sort of suppressing oneself through one's um, weaknesses or addictions, right? That would be the devil to me. The devil can be a tough card to deal with because we might find ourselves having to face things, feelings, emotions, um, challenges that we don't want to look at. You know, it could be like in my case, I'm just going to use me as if this was my reading. I would see this as trying not to get back into fear and anxiety by the end of the week because the devil would certainly want me there, right? The devil would want me to be challenged by that, would want me to stay stuck in there because it wouldn't allow me to rise to the beauty of this Hierophant, right? And sometimes when we get too, I don't want to say too far ahead of ourselves because the Hierophant isn't too far ahead of ourselves. The Hierophant's a very great card to be in in the midweek. Sometimes if we get to that place and we're feeling too good, then, you know, sometimes self-doubt or worry can sneak back in. And that would be the work of the devil, right? That would be, the devil can't necessarily harm us ultimately, though. The devil is there to teach us where our weaknesses are, where our Achilles heel is, where the work is that's left to be done, right? That we need to do for the week or that we need to uh, move out of the way. Uh, she's there to sort of show us that there is some sort of fruits of our labors if we fight, like, not fight against, because I don't want to say, it's always like when we resist the devil or we avoid it or we try and pretend it's not there, it gets worse for us. It can get heavier, harder, more, more fearful, more doubtful, more anxious. And so, and that's kind of where the devil wants us to be because then we're not productive. We're not trusting ourselves. We're not believing in ourselves. And I see a lot of trust and love happening in these first two cards in the early part of the week. So this devil card could be changed before we get to the end of the week. We don't have to head towards this devil card, but we have to be sort of vigilant in our efforts of staying in the clarity of the Eight of Cups and the Hierophant and staying in the strength of that and not allowing ourselves to get in our own way, if that makes sense. Let's look at the Oracle card. Hmm. The Oracle card is the Observer, card number 50. 50 would uh, uh, numerologically fall to a five. And I'm just going to point a few things out, especially to my regular viewers. We have those dandelion leaves that we saw twice in the last two cards blowing off of this woman's head. Remember in that um, New Directions card where they were in that dandelion sort of hot air balloon. Those dandelion flowers are here with us. So it, it takes me back to that New Directions card instantly. Five is about change, so it's temporary. And the observer is interesting to me because she's looking through this lens. And again, we see this moon that we see both in the Eight of Cups and in the Hierophant, yet not in the devil. There's not a lot of intuition going on in the devil. There's maybe more fear, worry, self-doubt going on in the devil by the week's end. What I like about the Observer card is that not only is she the numerological element of five, which is about change and transition, but she's also looking through a lens at things with an impartiality. She's looking to the future. She's still maybe feeling a little bit distant from that intuition that we see in that moon, but those dreams those dandelion fronds or whatever you call them, those dandelion flowers that are blowing about her head, are those dreams of those new directions that we want to pursue. Some of us might still be struggling with the pursuit of those new directions with that devil card at the end of the week for us. We might be able to see it more easily and feel like it's attainable, certainly with that Hierophant in the midweek. The Observer card says to us, keep a kind of a I don't know if it's impartial, but kind of keeping an impartiality in our endeavors, a creativity and a sort of a looking at it through a long view lens or a, a long, you know, how she's looking through that camera. She's kind of separating herself from maybe some of the, 
the emotionality, the heaviness, all of that sort of stuff, the fear of it all, and allowing herself to look at it through a different perspective might allow her to might allow us to sort of move beyond this devil and continue on towards whatever it is that our goals are and that our desires are. Now, let's go to the grounding stone. This will be the grounding stone for the week. And it is, okay, on courage. And I will take this for sure. Where I see courage in these cards, courage is in the ability to step away from whatever emotionally has been harming us, uh, causing us pain that we no longer feel connected to, that we might feel uh, weighed down by, um, being courageous to have the grace and the, to accept the transformation to move ahead, to move forward, to move away from. The courage is also in the Hierophant in believing in ourselves and in believing in our ability to sort of be right with society or be right with our teachings and to be able to teach others or lead others or to be led in a way that where we can listen, study and and acknowledge and move forward in a, in a, in a very strong way. Uh, the courage stone also comes up against that devil in, in the sense of do we have the courage to face maybe our fears, where we get trapped in our own mind, where we get trapped in our own procrastination. Or do, do we have the fear, do we have the courage to face the fear, challenge that devil and snatch those damn cherries right out of her hand, slap her in the face and say, I'm out of here, bitch. <laughs> I hope that we can. I do think that that observer card to me feels like if we look at this stuff from a like a more of a detached point of view, it might be easier for us throughout this week. Um, let me read the observer card to you. And again, this five is all about change in the observer card. So it's not like it's be all end all. All of this stuff is transitioning us to a better place. The observer is patience, awareness, and focus. Now, I would see that patience in the Hierophant card being the Octorian energy and in the Capricorn card of the devil. Um, and that also would be focus too, would be very much earth energy energy. Um, uh, uh, element. A woman is looking through an old-fashioned camera ready to take a photograph. She observes the landscape before her. All is quiet, all is peaceful. We don't know how long this woman has been waiting for the perfect shot. Let me see, is there more definition to her? Hold on. Oh, she has the patience to remain focused until the decisive moment presents itself. Strength lies in her calmness. She lives in the present and does not get easily distracted. So if there are some devils that arise in our end of the week, don't let them distract us. Be courageous. Stay patient. The patience also would be seen in that Eight of Cups and in that Hierophant card. Move through this week with grace, with strength, with patience. Um, even almost maybe a, a slight detachment. Be courageous and go after the things that you want, that you desire um, that, uh, inspire you. Okay. That is your reading for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, and I will look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow to see how this energy builds for the week. Happy Equinox, happy airy season, and keep an eye out for the, uh, tarot scopes this, uh, month for the month of April. All right. Have a great day, you guys, and, uh, like, and subscribe. All right. Bye-bye.